According to the U.S. Border Patrol, the number of children caught entering the U.S. alone has skyrocketed to more than 47,000 in just the first six months of this year. With 1,200 immigrants surrendering themselves to Border Patrol agents every single day, the agency is overwhelmed. So many of them are coming in on buses, others are being flown here. And this facility this morning is struggling to figure out what to do with all those children. These kids are coming from Central America, from Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador. They're traveling up through Mexico into the United States through Texas. The federal government is looking at several sites in New York as potential shelters, including a rundown former Walmart building. They want to house some of these people at the at the Border Patrol Academy while they're awaiting processing. The Border Patrol now worried about a virus outbreak. And sources tell me right now, all that's separating the sick from the healthy, this caution tape. The Chinese are paying 50,000, the Indians are paying 10 to 20,000. All the Central Americans, the average is about 7,000. So it's the cartels pushing these groups across the river to tie up our agents. Who or what is coming in we don't know, and we won't know until something bad happens. What changed was the fact that we were engaging in this catch and release program, and word spreads fast. And this crisis that some call a crisis, we have to view as an opportunity. They are the best that we have. Governor Brewer's office confirming today FEMA officials are overseeing a detention facility in Nogales, Arizona, and that's where these kids are going to be housed. Welcome to this special July 4th, 2014 edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Leanne McAdoo. Well, today is the day, of course, that we celebrate our Declaration of Independence. Obviously, originally from the Kingdom of Great Britain, but now we just really like to show our patriotism, how much we love this country, we love our freedom. 238 years of this freedom. Now, 4th of July is typically a day marked with patriotic celebrations, people proudly waving their flags. But it seems these days that the only day that you can proudly wave your American flag is on the 4th of July. Currently, we are labeling patriots and veterans as domestic terrorists and racist. People are actually being called racist if they wave their American flag. Meanwhile, we have people that are ruling us in absolute lawlessness and setting about to implode this country. Now, typically what you'll see around this time of year is your elected officials going out and doing their public display of how great America is. We're a nation of laws, a successful democracy. Meanwhile, we're in the throes of an immigration crisis, and we have a president who says that he's going to bypass Congress altogether once again and use executive action to further his immigration agenda. Now, the president himself, to our knowledge, he hasn't even visited the border or any of these border facilities to see the reality of the crisis that we are seeing with this influx of illegal immigrants. Our team has visited the border. We've covered it extensively. And what we've witnessed there is total collapse and absolute lawlessness. Joining me now is Jakari Jackson, Joe Biggs, and John Bowne. Now, guys, looking at the absolute lawlessness of the military bases all over the U.S. being set up as staging grounds for people who have illegally entered the country. I mean, President Obama hasn't bothered to go and visit these facilities yet, but you guys were there. You witnessed it firsthand. Describe what you saw. I'd say in a word, treasonous. It's just out of control completely. Yeah, it's an occupation. We are under occupation. And that is frightening. I mean, we've seen all of the footage o over the course of the last few weeks. What do you think about the fact, Joe, that Obama hasn't been to the facility yet? He sent out some of his minions. Well, it's funny. The Obama administration is saying that these fences along our border are racist. But if I'm not mistaken, isn't there a fence around the White House? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I just, isn't that racist? What are they doing about that? No one's trying to go to Washington right now and take that fence down. But, you know, the border fence, that's racist. You know, it's funny, when I went down to Lackland Air Force Base, Jed Johnson, and the Secretary of Homeland Security, scurried away and ran. And then Nancy Pelosi, once again, down in Brownsville, 
you know, w once you go out there and you try to hit them with some real questions about the issue, they run from you. you yeah, know? and the thing about Pelosi, she's all talking about how if she could, she would take all the kids home with her. You and I were both down there. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe I miscounted, but I counted a grand total of zero <laughs> children she took home with her. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't see any kids yeah. go with her. Well, what about all the kids that are homeless in this country? I just went to go get lunch a few days ago, and I saw a homeless kid walking down the street. Absolutely. I mean, we're talking about bringing in kids that can't speak the language, they don't understand our culture, they don't understand what it is to be a naturalized citizen. All they're going to do is add more of an economic destruction to our economy. And then you have to understand, Bound, because then you have to have the cultural sensitivity. Then you can't wear an American flag to, to school because you may offend somebody. Well, I had friends who died in combat to become citizens of this country, Mexican-American men who fought and died in Iraq and Afghanistan to go through the process the correct way. Absolutely. And these kids are being shipped over, they're being flown over by the busloads, by the plane, and we're wasting our resources and draining our economy. And there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do it, and this is no way the right way to do it. And Absolutely. all of America knows that. Right? You can feel it. Yeah. Well, and just I like in California yesterday when they stormed the buses and they were protesting. You know, finally people are standing up and they're saying, no, go back. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you went to Lackland Air Force Base. You were there to go to a press conference, and there were no other media there. You were the only one that was there, and they fled. Yeah, I got on the Department of Homeland Security website. I printed out the press release. He told me about it. We took it down there because, you know, I had this feeling that if I got down there, there'd be some kind of excuse like there always is with the government. We get down there, and they're like, whoa, 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 we're not expecting any kind of media. What are you doing here? And next thing you know, they go grab a Secret Service guy. They go grab a Homeland Security guy, and they come over. They take my ID, my military ID, my VA card, everything. Take the plates down on the vehicle and harass us. Meanwhile, Jed Johnson and, and company get you know pulled out of there, mm -hmm. thrown in their motorcade, and you know drive off because they wanted to say that they wanted the media there. I think it was just a, it was just a, another beard, another famous beard that the government throws on all the time. Jay yeah, Johnson is responsible for creating this mass exodus, this illegal, destructive exodus to our country. Right, they're continually sending mixed messages, and the mainstream media really isn't doing anything to help this. Um, basically, the way they're covering it, they're clearly showing what side they're taking. They're you know supporting the collapse of America. We have today anchor Matt Lauer. He declared. We want you to weigh in on this. Tweet out to the hashtag refugee riders. So now they're refugees. So they're just, they're pulling out this whole thing is that all these children are flooding the borders and their families because there's some crisis there. What has changed in Central America in the last two years, few years? Nothing. Well, you got to think though, it was funny though, when Jakari and I were down in Brownsville, uh, Pelosi was talking about, well, all these people, these, you know, these families, these young children from Honduras are, are fleeing to America and it's our job to take care of them. What they don't mention is in 2009, we're the one who funded the coup that took over Honduras. We put in the new government that now kills all the people there. You know, so it's another instance of us creating terrorists for yeah, no you, reason. You create the crisis, and then when they come here, and it's like, well, 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 we, well we, have to, we have to let them in because they're here. And that's the thing I keep hearing from these people. Like, well, these children didn't ask to come here. Maybe they didn't, but, you know, mm -hmm. we can't just bust them in. Now I hear reports that they're looking in the city of Dallas to start using some of these abandoned schools to house these people. Up in New York, they're talking about using old burnout Walmart facilities because we have so many people, we can't even keep them in the churches and on the military bases. Yeah, now our Border Patrol wants to quit. These guys are getting fed up. They, they, they can't. They're and not they know it's a joke. We, with both of you guys, we drove through the Border Patrol checkpoint, once with Bound and once with, with Biggs, and both times we pulled up, we said, hey, man, you, you guys know you're paying the bus tickets. <laughs> Those stations, yeah. now the Border Patrol themselves that are helping the, the ranchers and the mm -hmm. bankrupt cities north of the border, they're a tremendous help. Yeah. And, but they're, they're, ha they have to sit on their hands, too, because they don't have enough resources. But the Border Patrol stations themselves, they're checking us. The TSA is checking us. And meanwhile, America, they're all coming up through our border. We're being invaded. And the President of the United States is letting this happen. Yeah. Wake up, man. But yeah, the thing more, about it is, because yeah. you remember, both times we went through, everybody said they knew what was going on. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, you know they're mm -hmm. doing it, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's no big yeah. deal. Well, there's, it looks like more yeah. civilians are willing to step up the plate and help watch the border than the actual Border Patrol are, you know, when that report that I saw that you did. Yeah, yeah, uh, there are a lot of volunteers that come down, give their time from all over the country to help these ranchers, and it, it really doesn't dawn on you until you're standing there on their land realizing that while you're talking to them, that there may be 
and, and this terminology, migrants, mm -hmm. immigrants, mm -hmm. no. These people are illegal aliens. Right. And I've even added the terminology illegal citizens because what is a citizen except somebody that enjoys the rights and protection of their country? Well, these people are illegally enjoying the rights and protection of our country. The naturalized citizens like ourselves and the rest of America are here on this 4th of July witnessing our president mm -hmm. naturalize for I think the third year in a row on the 4th of July his liberal agenda to... Right to basically cloud and piven the uh, country. Yeah, well, the exactly. vice president of the Border Patrol Union said that he wants the National Guard to come down and help out on the administrative side so the Border Patrol agents themselves can actually get back to the border. But this, the thing is, though, like you said, they're not really doing anything. So I asked him, I said, I heard there's reports of militia coming down and they're willing to help out the Border Patrol. Would that be some kind of help that you'd be willing to take? And he said, no. He said, it doesn't make sense. They don't have arresting authority. And I looked at him and I said, guess what? Who are you guys arresting? You're not arresting anybody. Right. Everyone, yeah. the, the gates are open and you're letting everyone in yeah. and you're giving them a health card and you're giving them food and you're letting them go. <laughs> and, and you're letting them make what they call anchor babies. So when the, the, the immigrants come in and they have a kid, do you think a judge is going to kick them out after that? No, their kid is now a U.S. citizen and they will stay. We're, we're talking about the destruction of this country, hyper destruction of this country by our government. That's what we're talking about here. And it's a tactic that they're using. I mean, you see yeah. how the main, the, the lamestream media is covering it. They won't even call them illegal immigrants. They call them undocumented immigrants. Um, ABC's Good Morning America, they just simply called them immigrants. So now, I mean, what a slap in the face to people who have been spending thousands of dollars every year, waiting year after year, doing everything they can to play by the law to become citizens of the United well, States of so America. And then now we're out. just inviting all these people in and saying, eh. They, they, they use that hearts and mind card every time. Look at these kids. Look at these kids. You know, it's just look at the kids. It's not look at these kids who are bringing in, you know, hepatitis and tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, though, is the people at the border who are checking for the diseases and screening them, they're basic EMTs. They are not in any kind of way trained to deal with diseases like that. Well, as we speak, there was a TB outbreak in Sacramento at a high school. And Sacramento, 20% of their population, or 19% of their population, is undocumented immigrants. But you know what? They're illegals. Well, I just so, went right. back to Lackland Air Force Base, and that's where they have the outbreak of the swine flu. Mm. From when I went a couple weeks ago until today, it looks like a contagion, like an outbreak scene. All these huge tents, medical personnel all over the place, but there's nothing going on there. And mm -hmm. there, there's, you know, you got to consider other things that are coming in because when you drive into California, you're asked, are you carrying any exotic fruit or exotic animals? Why are they asking you that? Mm -hmm. When their borders, when well, borders are wide open, there's no telling what's coming across that border. Well, a few, we, we're starting to get reports on a few things that are coming across. In 1943, we, we eradicated the fever tick that got into our livestock. It was a huge problem for our livestock, our cattle industry in South Texas and the South. Well, now as the illegals are crossing that water, they're getting the larva all over their clothes and their skin, and they're bringing that back. In. So that's going to eradicate our already struggling beef industry. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, and, and then not to mention the bed bug outbreaks that we've had in the mm -hmm. past here in America. You know, the, the amount of bed bug outbreaks that we're going to about to see, TB outbreaks, there's no telling. And then the, the mutation, the hybridization of what they're bringing up into what we already have. It's a complete disaster. And these are just the people that we know coming through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, for the hundreds that we know coming through every day, double that, that's who's getting through that we don't see. Right, and we have uh, reports now that the medical staff here at these border facilities are being told to keep your mouth shut about the diseases that you're you're witnessing here or face arrest. Yeah, I went down and got yeah. pictures of those, uh, the, what they called the brown shirt guys, the security mm -hmm. forces driving around Lackland base, you know, watching. And I tried to talk to one of the personnel out there and they just kind of scurried by. They just kept walking. They wouldn't look over my way whatsoever and give me any kind of an acknowledgement. Yeah, because you remember I talked to the ice whistleblower and he said, yeah, we have people come in with TB. And I said, well, what kind of treatment do you give? He said, well, we, uh, we examine them, we give them chest x-rays and all this, but they still have those, uh, those illnesses in the facilities. And the thing he told me, the kicker is, they have such uh, a such small bed space in those facilities that they just let a lot of people go. Right. They don't